So for our final speaker of the day, um, and then I'll just do a few um, minutes of wrap up and, and some practical details for you before we let you all go on your way. Um, Melissa Bowles Terry is our uh, final speaker, and Melissa earned her MS in Library and Information Science at the University of Illinois Urbana Champaign, and also holds an MA in English from Utah State University. She's currently instructor and assessment coordinator for the libraries at the University of Wyoming. She's interested in assessment of student learning and information literacy instruction. Melissa? Thank you. All right, can you hear me? Great. It's great to be here. I really feel like I'm with my tribe when I'm among instruction assessment folks. Um, and I'm going to talk today about a mixed method study that we did at University of Wyoming regarding our library instruction program as a whole. Um, when Megan was, when, when she had her A to W list of all the assessment methods, I think I've done about 10 of those in our program, but they're all very episodic and I was trying to get a picture of our instruction program as a whole body. Um, I've just been in this job for about two years, and since I started, I've been thinking, what does this program really look like? I don't know. So, trying to figure that out. Um, what I hope you'll take away is some ideas for assessment for your program, and also some thoughts about how we assess an instruction program from a student-centered perspective. So, some background about my institution. The University of Wyoming is in Laramie. It's the only four-year university in the state, and the state has just about 500,000 people in the whole state, really. <laughs> um, so it's, the population is very rural and very distributed, and students come to us mostly from very small towns. Um, although we also get quite a few students from Colorado's Front Range because Laramie is just a couple of hours north of Denver. Um, and uh, universities in Colorado are becoming prohibitively expensive, as they are elsewhere, but tuition is still under control at University of Wyoming. So our enrollment is just around 13,000. 3,000 join us through outreach and 10,000 are on campus. Um, information literacy is part of our general education program and has been since 2003. Every student is required to take a class with an embedded information literacy component. And those classes are mostly at the 1,000 level. So like orientation to engineering is an information literacy class where students do a research project or introduced to library resources and sort of get oriented to research in their field. Um, just because these are 1,000 level courses doesn't mean that every student takes it in their first year at college, of course. Um, and that's one of the difficulties of a medium or large institution that doesn't have a core curriculum that students just proceed through in a very orderly fashion. As some of you has, have said today, it can be very, very spastic, really. Um, you can't count on students taking one path to the degree. Um, this is our instruction program. We have an increasing number of instruction sessions that are taught by about 10 librarians, four who have a very heavy instruction load and the rest who kind of do some when they feel like it. Um, <laughs> and you'll notice that our numbers kind of level out in 2010. We lost two librarians this year, so we're kind of holding steady um, with fewer people. We're seeing about 7,500 students per year or half of the student body. And we're just wondering, is all the time that we spend on instruction worth it? Should we be seeing all the freshmen? Is that really the best place to concentrate our efforts? And is there a way to improve? And this study was motivated in large part by the value report. Um, and we, we wanted to see what kind of value we're adding. And also, another motivation is that the general education program is being revamped. And we would really like for information literacy to remain an integral, credit-bearing part of that program and we just know it would help to have some evidence that it makes a difference. So these are my research questions. What is the relationship between student success, which I mostly defined as GPA and information literacy instruction? Which students receive library instruction? When? And that's where I wanted to get kind of my big picture of what our program actually looks like. And then is there a good argument for creating a tiered program? of information literacy instruction, by which I mean having it built in, not just in the freshman year, but at other levels of the curriculum as well. So um, this is, I'm going to show you what our instruction program currently looks like from the librarian perspective. Um, we have some pre-college groups come in. <laughs> That's high school students, upward bound groups. 55% of our instruction is at the 1,000 level. 
We teach lots of those um, information literacy classes. Also, all of the English classes, all of the speech classes, all of the engineering classes all come in at that 1,000 level. 14% is at the 2,000 level. 9% at the 3,000 level. And we have two credit-bearing classes. Those are the bigger orange boxes that you see um, that we teach for mostly transfer students who didn't get the information literacy in their first year. 12% seniors, some grad classes, and some faculty workshops. Um, in a few programs like art history and psychology, there are these vertical connections between what we're doing at the 1,000, 2,000, 4,000 level. And our goal is to create more of those vertical connections. But first, we felt like we needed to see what it looked like from a student perspective. Um, we, so yeah, so this is um, librarian gathered data. I decided to do a transcript analysis in some focus groups with seniors to find out how this instruction program actually touches students. So first method was a focus group. Um, with this qualitative research method, I wasn't aiming to be representative of the whole group, but to learn more in depth about a few students' experience. Um, so I recruited students with the promise of a jump drive and lunch or dinner. And um, the facilitator was a librarian new to our department who didn't know the participants. So that's kind of the, what our groups looked like. And we had two different groups that each met for 90 sessions, or for 90 minutes. Uh, my other method in this mixed method study was a transcript analysis. I requested a bunch of data from the registrar's office, um, which included all the students who entered UW from 2005 to 2007. So they should have graduated by 2011, or they dropped out. Um, so I got their, their sex, their major, their, the last major, the classes they've taken every year, and their grades. And then I matched that data from the registrar with our database of classes that we have met with over the past five years. We have a list. So um, this, my list from the registrar included students who transferred, who left the university without a degree. It included graduate students and professional students. But I did cut out the law students because they're sort of off on their own. Um, so I had a data set of about 8,000 students. I took a sample of, a systematic sample of 200 because I couldn't deal with the whole big data set at first. So that um, sample gave me a 90% confidence interval. I used access to create a list of students who had library instruction. And then I used Excel to sort my students into three groups, or four groups, actually, which I'll talk about, and then calculated their GPAs. So. The data analysis. My first question, again, was what is the relationship between student success and information literacy instruction? I divided my students into four groups. The first group was 1,000 level plus. They received library instruction at the 1,000 level, and then, again, sometime in their university career. That was 91 out of my 200 students. So 45% had what I thought was ideal, at least two visits to the library, freshman, and then again later. Um, 61 had 1,000 level only. They had only been to the library their freshman year or you know, when they took 1,000 level classes. Um, so that was 30%. My third group had no 1,000 level instruction, but they had it at some other time. These are mostly transfer students and graduate or professional students who weren't at the university their freshman year. And then um, 20 students, or 10% of the sample, had no library instruction at all. So that told me something that I didn't know before. When I tried to match it up with GPA, I was disappointed. Um, the median GPA for the whole sample was 3.027. Students who had instruction their first year and some other time were right near that group median, median 3.172. Um, People who had it their freshman year only had a significantly lower GPA, 2.3, but they mostly dropped out. <laughs> they were only there for one or two semesters, had very low grades, and then they left. So I'm not, I, library instruction doesn't matter. Um, students who had upper division instruction only had a significantly higher GPA, 3.5, but that group has so many graduate students and professional students that that definitely skews the GPA, as you can imagine, because those students have a much higher GPA in general. And students with lo no library instruction at all, that 10%, their GPA was also right at the median. So what does this tell me? 
ebb and null hypothesis, basically. Um, it looks as though library instruction does not have a significant effect on GPA at University of Wyoming, at least in the aggregate. Um, we can look at students in smaller groups to see about differences, but overall, it turns out that we see such a significant majority of students sometime, in fact, more than once, um, it's not really possible to say that library instruction changes grades. So I'm a little disappointed, but also encouraged to see just how many students we, we see. Um, also, the focus group was really telling in this because even if you can't see it in their GPAs, students who were graduating from UW this past spring told us some things that they learned um, in library instruction that helped them. So the question that we asked was, did you learn something from a librarian that helped you complete a research project? Every student had something to say, whether it was about a database or a specific skill. So one student said in a freshman level class, um, I learned a lot about how to refine searches, especially commas, question marks, quotation marks. Those skills, I use those skills every day, even on Google. So that, that's um, good to know. And then a sociology student said she had a research methods class visit the library. And she said she learned about the research thesauri in disciplinary databases. And I quote, that became one of the most important tools I think I ever was introduced to. I didn't know the students cared that much about a thesaurus. <laughs> but now I know. Um, so I think that from the, from the qualitative data, we can say that there is a relationship between student success and information literacy instruction. Um, another of my research questions was which students receive library instruction when the answer is almost everybody and definitely in their freshman year. 90% um, of students receive library instruction and 76% receive it as freshmen. So our next steps are going to be compar comparing majors, looking at transfer students, looking at graduate and professional students, and kind of breaking it out from this big aggregate group to look at different smaller groups within that. And so, so what? What do I know now? Um, I think that one of the main takeaways that I will, I will be working with my colleagues on is that since three quarters of our students get freshman level instruction, we should know going into the upper division classes that we're speaking to students who do know the basics. In the focus groups, some students expressed frustration that they heard the same thing over again. You know, they said, I came in my senior year, but everybody should have known that stuff their freshman year. And I think we really need to differentiate between lower division and upper division learning objectives. And um, students also suggested, and I've heard this in the literature and at conferences too, that why don't you just have some, vi some videos to cover that basic orientation stuff, and if people need to see it, they can go to that, and they don't have to listen to the library and tell them again the stuff that they heard when they were freshmen. Um, another of my questions was, how can we improve the program? And this just comes directly from students from those focus groups. So I have some student voices. Um, if there was something with quick links, specifically for different majors, that would be really nice. That would be amazing. Those are libguides, and we have those. But they're not getting embedded into classes, or students don't know about them. And so one of our major takeaways is we need to get those libguides into students' classes. They want them, and they need them. And so if we can tell instructors, like, look, this is no work for you. I can put this subject guide right into your course shell. No problem. Your students will use it. You know, I think that this provides some evidence for that. Another student said, I didn't really come over here to explore until I was forced to with my class. And then when I came in here, I was like, this place is amazing. I should come study here more often. Um, I think we all know that library instruction can be kind of a PR move, just to get students into the library, to see the space, to meet a librarian who's nice and friendly and not scary. Um, and this, I think, provides evidence for that as well. And Although we've moved way away from doing tours or scavenger hunts or anything like that, I think that still getting students to the library to get some of that orientation is still an important feature. Another student said, if you're completely ignorant, then you have no idea that you don't even know. So unless somebody tells you that you don't know you don't know, then you're not going to go look for the information. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's right, metacognition right there. Uh, this senior knows that she doesn't know what she doesn't know. It sounds like Donald Rumsfeld, right? The unknown unknowns. Um, but I think, again, that speaks to the need for subject guides, the need for orientation, and um, you know, just 
we, we do need to talk to students to tell them what they don't know. And finally, I feel like the library telling the students the fun things that are here too would be good because you don't hear about that unless you hear it word of mouth. I found out last year about all the old newspapers from Wyoming. I found my birth picture on the microfilms. So that's kind of cute. <laughs> I thought. Um, so students told us we need to differentiate between the lower division and upper division instruction, that we should market some of our special services more heavily so that they know we have newspapers, we have things that they might like to use. Um, another question that I tried to answer in this project is, is there a good argument for creating a tiered program of information literacy instruction? If you just take GPAs, not really. Um, but students say yes. Another quote, it would be cool if you had a freshman thing, then as you get more specialized in your field, more specific scholarly instruction. And when the students in the focus groups were asked, when would you have liked to receive library instruction, 12 out of the 15 said that they would like a freshman visit plus a later subject specific visit. So even though the GPA data it doesn't really tell me anything. Students say yes, and of course learning theory also says yes, that reinforcement and scaffolding are very important to developing an understanding of these concepts. And the latest version of our instruction and assessment plan includes a section that outlines um, appropriate learning outcomes for different levels. So we're sharing that as the general education program is revised. So what did I learn? Um, student achievement can be defined in many different ways, as we've heard today. Um, I think that instead of comparing library instruction to GPA and trying to make correlations that way, we may want to look at senior capstone projects, portfolios. Um, I really like the idea of looking at a sample of reflective journals. And um, obviously that's a more authentic, but also a much more labor intensive way to measure the impact of library instruction. We may not be able to look at the whole student body and in the in the past, in a lot of assessment projects we've done, we've been looking at segments, you know, the freshman engineers, and then all of the English 1010 classes, et cetera. So um, putting together the big picture remains a bit of a challenge. Um, at our institution, we are going to be implementing an institution-wide critical thinking test from Tennessee Tech. Maybe some of you have heard of it. But it includes some information literacy outcomes that we're going to work with um, the general education committee to, to work on that. Um, I would say that student-centered assessment of a program is really worthwhile, trying to see things the way that students see your program. Because we have curriculum integration with information literacy, but our curriculum is still fragmented. Um, not every student sees, not every student takes the same path, but seeing the path that some take is enlightening for our lesson planning and for our program development. And seeing how students actually experience the library instruction program is really important to designing a cohesive and a non-repetitive curriculum. And it really helped me to just think about library instruction as a curriculum and not just a series of one-shot workshops. Because um, that's not how students experience it. They see you three times. They, they do remember. You don't have to repeat it at all from time to time. All right, um, one of the questions that we asked students in the focus group, one of the last questions was, what do you value about the library? And I'm really interested in what came up today, asking, you know, what do you value about librarians instead of the library? Because as it, as it turns out, what students value about the library is access to information and library space to study and work. Um, so here's, here's a quote from a student about access. Living in Wyoming, we have a tendency to feel really isolated not just from the rest of the country, though we are, but from the world at large. Weather and geography just conspire against us. And I like that we have a deep research library here and that we make every effort to have the connections to other libraries. It's the whole, if we don't have it, we can get it mentality. And I really appreciate that about this library. And I think it's important to keep student values in mind as we plan instruction. We know what we want them to learn. We know what the faculty may want them to learn. But let's think, too, about what they want or what they value from the library. And that's access to information. So if we can frame it in a way that's telling them, I know that you need such and such information for your classes, and I'm here to help you get to it, just think about it from their point of view. That's what they want. Um, all right. 
So I would be really happy to continue this conversation. Um, on your handout that's in your folder from me, you have my research questions and my methods, and then some suggested reading stuff that I read that informed my thinking about this, and also my contact info. So um, I still have work to do on this project. And your suggestions and comments are welcome. We, we do have a few minutes for questions, so. Yes. I wrote this one down. <laughs> All right. Um, since you're the major research facility in your state, how do you deal with the distance learners at the very beginning stages? Um, distance learners, like freshmen? Yeah. OK. We have a really good relationship with the outreach school. Um, it's existed for a long time in Wyoming because we're such a large but small population state. So um, we've worked very closely with Outreach to get a library module embedded in every online class. And we're also invited to most, we still have video and phone classes <laughs> too. So we have a video system throughout the state that students join us with. So we'll visit those video classes. And um, LibGuides has helped tremendously with the phone classes. When you're on the phone trying to teach somebody about information literacy, it's really helpful if you can say, now look at your LibGuide. We're all on the same page here. Um, but, but the outreach school and our partnership with them has just been paramount. It's the most important thing. Yes. Um, so you talked about um, asking your students about the information literacy program. Have you uh, looked at your faculty and done any focus groups or asked your faculty members about what their thoughts on your information literacy program were? That's a great question. And we've done two needs assessments with faculty. Um, last year, we surveyed the outreach faculty to find out about their needs for library instruction specifically. We asked them, you know, have you had a librarian visit your class? Would you be willing to? How did that go? You know, those kinds of questions. So we, we were kind of doing that group by group. So we did the outreach faculty last year. We surveyed the College of Education faculty this year to find out what they need and if we're, if we're meeting those needs, we asked them to suggest any instruction services that we're not currently offering. But focus groups might be a good plan, too. Uh, we, didn't, we got a great response rate to our outreach survey, but a much lower response from our education faculty. And I'm not exactly sure why. Thank you.